There we go. <clears throat> and I just want to make sure that, uh, let's see, you should be seeing my standard uh, family history tutorial screen. Are you all seeing that? Yeah. Yep. Yes, right. I am. Jerry, you might find <clears throat> tonight might be easier for you to see what I'm doing <clears throat> because I'm using a smaller screen. Uh, last week, I used a pretty big monitor and projected the whole thing. And so things tended to be super small. I hope tonight it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, let's dive right in. Um, tonight, our episode is on data. It's called Data Detective Solving Mysteries. And, uh, and then next week will be our final episode in the series, Preparing Names for Temple Ordinances. Um, I, in thinking about how I would approach tonight, I, I came up with this sort of uh, outline, the top things that I would recommend for solving mysteries. <coughs> Excuse me. One is, uh, let's, just, let's just step back for a minute and talk about what we did in the first few weeks. The first week, uh, actually, I guess it was the first week was my, my philosophical overview. The second week was, how do we build a tree fast? You know, just grab a lot of stuff and stick it in a tree. And we used David Grant's grandfather as the seed for, for that activity. Last week was about... Well, David is pretty seedy, so that <laughs> made sense. Yeah. Yes. And uh, <laughs> he is the, uh, the descendant of a gay pride hooker. Also, we learned. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so last week we focused on, uh, okay, you've built this uh, big ball of, of theory... Uh, you know, of, of maybe. Now, how do we begin to validate and verify that the facts that we have been collecting are indeed true and begin to um, separate fa fact from fiction and make sure that um, we're getting things accurate? I also gave a short uh, demo uh, overview, anyway, of familysearch.org last week. So this week, we're going to, this funnel is getting, you know, smaller and smaller. Uh, this week, we're going to <clears throat> we're going to address the issue of look. I've been out there trying to uh, you know find fact from fiction and whatever, but now I've I've run up against a brick wall. There's something I I can't find the answer to. It isn't that I have bad data and I'm trying to make it accurate. It's that I can't find accurate data. I can't find data on something. It, it's probably out there, but how do you go about it? And so I, I, what I'd like to do is uh, not that I'm the only person who has done this or uh, that I'm the world's you know, gift to, uh, to solving mysteries, but I'll at least share my approach. And, it, and uh, we'll go into some detail on each of these four areas. Uh, one is <clears throat> when, you're, when you're trying to solve a mystery, don't uh, focus on one mystery at a time. I'll get to that in a minute. Second, as you are working through the focus, the, the investigation, document assiduously. I'm very proud of using that word assiduously. I did look it up uh, to make sure it was the right word, and it is the right word. Uh, document carefully and thoroughly. Um, and I'll, I'll talk more about that also as we, <clears throat> as we go through the call tonight. Uh, then the third piece of advice I have is to build your network. <clears throat> and that by network, I mean the network of people who might be able to help you uh, in, in solving mysteries. And then lastly, uh, build your list of genealogy sites. Um, and I'll, I'll share some of my sites that, uh, that I use, although I'm, it's probably going to be uh, pretty easy for me. Or when you're looking at it, you're probably going to go, oh, that might have mattered to Brad, but, you know, I don't care about it those sites, that's fine. Build your own list, but we'll get to that. So that's the uh, the basic outline for, the, for tonight. And Larry, you got here just in time. Uh, tonight I want to talk briefly about two mysteries. Um, one is the guy on the left, Donald Albert Durham. And uh, uh, he's actually Larry's grandfather, I believe. Uh, last week, I, I put a challenge out to our participants. If anybody had a mystery that they haven't been able to solve, you know, tell it to me and I'll see if I can, uh, you know, I'll give it a shot and see if I can learn anything or maybe open some doors. Now, just to, to make to sort of get us out of the 
out of the way, Larry. I'm not sure I got anything uh, solved in the case of Donald Albert Durham. But I think what I did to begin the process might be instructive for tonight. So I'll at least spend a few minutes on, on him. And then we're going to spend time on uh, my great great grandfather, James Purser. Uh, and we're going to run it, or I'm going to talk about one of the great mysteries that I've been trying to figure out. When was he baptized? And uh, so that'll form the, um, the bulk of um, the outline for what we're trying to accomplish today. <clears throat> um, so let's spend a few minutes here on this one, uh, on mystery number one. Uh, let's see, Larry sent me an email and he said, uh, Donald Albert Durham, he, he, he gave me the, his birth date, I believe it was 1894 in Missouri, but there's not some question as to whether, you know, exactly where in Missouri and uh, apparently there's very little known about this guy uh, until the, you know, he was, uh, you know, th uh, 30 or 40 years old. And then the, the records, the census and other kinds of records begin to appear about him. But it's been difficult for Larry to find any data about his uh, mother's father, I believe it is, uh, about his birth. Um, okay, we think he's born in Missouri, not exactly sure where, and, uh, and and he's looking for more clarity on that. Did I did I capture that right, Larry? It's unmuted. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty close. He uh, he he sprang full blown in uh, someplace either in Nebraska or Wyoming after World War One, and his only form of identification was a dog tag, and that's and after that everything we got from him was only when he was drunk, and usually he told lies. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up, uh, let's see, uh, this window. It's uh, probably this window. Yes. Okay. So what I did is uh, I went out and uh, I went to Ancestry.com and I simply did a search on Donald Albert Durham. On his house just to see what I would find. And my guess is that everything I'm, I'm about to show, Larry, you already know this, but I wanna show the other people sort of the, the process I began and some of the ways that I start thinking about things. Um, I did not begin to build a tree. To, I, I, I never actually clicked on any of these names and, or any of these hints and said, I'm gonna start um, you know, actually building a tree uh, for whatever reason, but still, I wanna spend a few minutes on it. Just by looking for Donald Albert Durham, born 1894, male, United States. Those were the only criteria that I gave in Ancestry. Uh, he, here, here was something that came up in someone's family tree. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask right now, because I think you'll know, Larry, is this your, um, your Donald Durham? Yes, that is. That's him, and uh, and uh, the information that's there, by and large, came either from me because I put it in to Ancestry, or there is a mystery Durham out there who I've tried to contact, Edwin Charles Durham, uh, except Edwin Charles Durham passed away about 14 years ago, but suddenly somebody with that same name uh, has a has a an Ancestry account. <laughs> And so uh, we got ghosts in the in the woodwork. Yeah, identity theft at Ancestry. Who knows? Um, so, uh, just a quick question I have for you is: This Durham family tree is that your tree? Did I bump into work you've done right here? Nope, that is not my tree. All right. Um, so we'll come back to this when we talk about building your network, but. Uh, you know, somebody cares about Durham's. In fact, let's just click on it here. I usually leave the, the window and open a new link so I don't lose my place. And then, then I'll come back and work on something until I'm done with it. Then I close out the uh, the tab. That's my usual approach. Let's see. So um, here is the Durham family tree. Oh, there's Edwin Durham. So that's who you're talking about. Uh, the person who apparently is, uh, you know, building this and who maybe who had that picture, who knows? is Edwin Durham. And if you click on there, um, it'll give you a little bit of information about him. It's been a while since he logged in. Uh, we see that his research interests are the, uh, perhaps the mother, uh, your, the maternal side of that family, 
but it's also possible that, um, let's see, is there a way to reach out? But he has to log in for you to reach out. So you can message him right here if you haven't done so already. And I've done so in to no, no response in yeah. over six months. Uh, all right. So, uh, so there's this one. <clears throat> there were some other things that came up, and I pretty much just opened a tab for every one of these things that came up because I wanted to, uh, I wanted to touch on them briefly. We do see a, a pattern, though. They they tend to look like the same guy. 1894 to 1975. That looks about right. 1894. Uh, some. Uh, I don't know about Nebraska, but um, Wyoming. I, I'm seeing that routinely. Here's 1875. Um, so it it looks like we might have oh, Texas. I don't know about that. Oh, Albert J. Durham. Well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's part of the problem because now what he said in the 1830 census is it said that his father was born in Oklahoma and his mother born in Texas, but you know. Yeah, yeah, he could have had, had that wrong or who knows what. So I'm going to just quickly go through some of these here. Um, uh, one of them was find a grave. Uh, Donald A. Durham, that's a good sign. The right death dates uh, died in the right place. This is knowledge you would have because uh, this is a, your grandfather. So you're going to likely know this quite well. And you're certainly going to know uh, your, what would these be? That's my uncle. uncle? Yeah. Is this your mother maybe right here? No, that's, uh, that's my Aunt Dorothy. Okay. So, you know, just looking at it, you'll know that this is accurate. Um, yeah. And these suggested records that come up over here, I don't usually spend much time here because the hints will usually pick all those up. Um, and I don't need to spend more time looking over there, but um, to each his own. The next one that we saw was this uh, World War I draft registration card. Um, where he's, I guess he's in Dodge, Missouri because he's in the army, but I'm gonna click on the image uh, because I always click on the image because uh, I usually discover something there. It does look like the right guy though, to me. Interesting yeah. that he didn't give his middle name. I, you'd think the military would insist on that, but he didn't. Wait, say that again? You would think. Yeah, uh, and then here's part of the the mystery, you know, I would be writing this down, and you actually told me this in your email, uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. Now, this is self-reporting, so, um, you know, it, it, he might be wrong about where he was born, but he claimed he was born in St. Joseph, Missouri when he um, signed up for the draft. Uh, he's single, Caucasian, and there's one other thing. Oh, yeah, his signature, uh, which to me looked like uh, I don't know, a fourth grader or a third grader. Like perhaps he wasn't that well uh, educated or schooled in penmanship anyway. No judgment there, but just a little factoid that I might um, mm -hmm. store away as I start to think about his life and his life story. Uh, all right, so here we have a, an, a World War II draft registration card. Uh, again, uh, reporting St. Joseph, Missouri. Yeah, right there. Uh, and uh, let's see. I didn't see anything interesting. Oh, he says there's no middle name. So maybe he just does, prefers to go by Donald Durham. I do. I don't like my middle name. So I, whenever possible, I, I don't tell people what it is, even on my, like my, uh, my mortgage. I don't have my name on my middle name on my mortgage. Um, so I would, that's, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't zoom in on that. So that's uh, interesting. Moving on to the next record that came up, uh, also looks like it's probably him living in Wyoming um, in a rented house on a farm. His father's birthplace, Oklahoma, mother's birthplace, Texas, he claims. So that's uh, interesting. You, you sort of had that information already. Uh, and then we have some family members here. He is three years old and here's his, sorry, no, sorry. He is 36 years old. And uh, uh, each of these uh, are probably worth clicking on and going down into. Uh, one thing that I found when I'm trying to establish more information about somebody is to is to traverse the tree just a little bit, especially in uh, in like the census or something like that, or in family search in the to see memories because sometimes somebody's uh, granddaughter 
not your direct ancestor, like your 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 great uncle or something like that, um, or second cousin, they might have a family history that they wrote um, about that same ancestor that you're trying to find information about. And you can sometimes get that from what they posted on familysearch.org. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, this one I found, uh, at first, I found this to be not very believable because I don't remember why, uh, but I but when I saw Donald Richard Durham, this all seems to match up. Uh, do you have knowledge that he worked for Chicago and Northwestern Railroad? He did. He was uh, he was he was a railroad hand for a number of years. All right, good. So that does uh, line up with things. Uh, here, of course, in the Social Security Death Index, we have a Social Security number, which can be useful. If I was really researching him, I would definitely take a note of that. It actually comes up in the California Death Index as well. I clicked on it real quickly here. Uh, and so we know that we're talking about the same person. And you might find the ability to search on that Social Security number and find other records in other systems that, uh, that refer to him to get more information about his um, his life and his birth. Uh, okay, so we did uh, the California death record, and then we were already in here, and I don't think I did much more here. Yeah, so I, this is not gonna be super satisfactory to the mystery that you um, offered for me to help uh, bust through, but I thought I'd at least share some of the ways that I would begin addressing it. Um, and uh, I do wish you luck on that, Larry. I appreciate that. This is mostly the same things that I have, but I have not taken the Social Security number and run it as a separate search pattern. So um, that's that's a good hint. I'll, I'll do that. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. There was one more I, uh, over here. Where is it? Um, here we go. I went over to Family Search and looked him up. And uh, here we have um, his record. And I noticed immediately Emmett Bird has recently. Oh. Sorry, I heard that as just a, a, a burst. Did someone say something? Oh, she just went, ah. Oh. <laughs> that's, her, that's her grandson. Uh, oh, it's your grandson. All right. So, Emmett, there's apparently. There's no way of contacting them. Uh, there's nothing. When you click on the name. Right. Send a message, uh, or it'll often give you the. Um, wait, what happened there? Uh, yeah, you can send a message to them uh, and uh, and begin a conversation. Uh, because clearly Emmett Bird has a shared interest and this dude, David Richard Hanks, has been posting uh, specifically on this record and with lots of posts uh, over here on latest changes, you'll see, I don't know why, keep, why it keeps redrawing everything, but uh, this will show um, That's another person, yeah, another person. That's and, another person. All right. So one thing that you, if you haven't done it already, is you might begin a uh, a collaboration, uh, reach out individually to them, and, or even as a group, and say, let's get together and solve this mystery once yeah. and forever, or once and for all. Uh, Mo Mohan Ananantamula, you know, oh, apparently wow. there's. Look at all this work on the relationship. There's been some, uh, some I don't know if controversy is the right word, maybe some duplicates that are being uh, replaced or whatever. So, you know, be watching for that. The point I'm trying to make here is uh, that we found additional uh, network members, potential network members in Family Search, not just in Ancestry.com. All right, so uh, that is Click It Away, gone. That is the end of uh, my discussion about Mr. Durham. Hi. All right, uh, on to James Purser. Now, folks, I, I really, I kind of don't even want to start going into this because I've spent. I'm not. I'm not going to try to solve it right here. I'm going to try in five minutes, eight thirty. That's going to be my goal to end this uh, this part in five minutes to share what my problem is and what I've done, not to ask you to solve it, but to just show you how I've been going about preparing for the answer to be manifest to me uh, uh, at some point in the hopefully near future. Uh, all right, so let's go over here 
this is my, you know, one of those biographies that I've put together on James Purser. And I wrote this some years ago. I, I really like it. I, I traveled to Wales and uh, visited his homes and uh, the homes of his other parents and the churches where they were baptized and uh, the, uh, the whole area, right? Uh, in, including his wife's family who was from the neighboring town, and researched all of their, their trek to America and where they settled in Cache Valley, uh, drew these amazing maps that showed how the family all lived close to each other and uh, and then tracked them to the later years and uh, and then a little bit about each of their chi of his children. Okay, so that's what I what I worked on. But um, there's some things that I was not able to solve about him. Um, and I'll just uh, I, I, let me just zoom into 200 percent here. Um, both his family's conversion, his parents and him, and his wife's family's conversion, her parents and her, and several of her uncles and aunts, they all got uh, converted to Mormonism at some point. And, they, and most of them uh, moved to America. But the, the records of their actual baptisms are murky. Uh, in fact, most of them have multiple entries in church baptism databases most of them got baptized again when they landed in america often within days of arriving in salt lake uh, they were baptized again and uh, i just wasn't able to find anything that was um, completely believable on their bap on when they were baptism baptized and so i did not put it in the main biography I can i ask you a question sure where did you go for, did you go through the church at all to find out anything at the early baptisms? Yes. Yeah. And I'll talk about that. Um, uh, and I'll also share some, uh, some sites to the, the participant, to the attendees tonight for where you can go to do the same thing. Now, Patty, there may be other sites that um, you're aware of that I wasn't, but I'll be sharing that as in the last part of tonight's uh, presentation. So, um, what you're seeing here as I uh, investigate his uh, baptism, I'm going to break away for a minute and go over to our, um, my point, point number two of tonight's four points, document assiduously. What you're seeing is an example of how I do it. And it's, it's what's worked for me to, um, to, not only solve mysteries, but even better, more than that, to investigate mysteries. Sometimes I don't get them solved. This one, I have so much information that I, I actually included my investigation in the appendix in case some, you know, uh, genealogy nerd came across it and thought that they could help to find an error in my logic or whatever. Um, so some of the points that I wanna make is always include the URL or source of every fact or possible fact that you record. Um, popping back over to my little document here. Um, these, um, last week I think I showed you a simple uh, fact gathering, you know, form that I was using for one of my ancestors. In this case, this, this particular um, outline that you're seeing is specific to the baptism of the Ainans. That's the one family. Yeah, page after page, diagram after diagram. Look at all this. Holy, what the? He did all that? Yes, I did. Um, and then um, here is James Purser's parents and family. James was one of the children. So there's a whole different uh, multi-page analysis of James's baptism. And uh, you can see that I'm writing in full sentences here because I'm writing it for others to to consume, you know, one of the early church member files, this is the file, shows it, and you know, the actual link to take you there, shows additional baptisms for Francis Purser. Image 2493 lists this date, image 2494 lists that date, etc. As you can see, I'm documenting assiduously. And this isn't really for the genealogy nerd, it's for me, because um, as Brother Bird said in his email, uh, that uh, there, as I'm going off memory here, 
uh, which is maybe another reason why I document assiduously because my memory is not that good. But it was something like one time as you were looking around, you saw that there are two different St. Joseph, Missouri's potentially, and it, or two different counties that there's a St. Joseph, Missouri in, and you didn't know which county, and it probably was worth investigating both counties. Um, that's a great example of a fleeting fact that you came across while you were researching, but that you didn't write down and put the source or the URL so that you could go back to it. Um, you, you can only hold a very small number of facts in your brain at any time. So oh, yeah. when, when you get to one of these mysteries, you've got to document it in detail. Maybe not in full sentences like I've done here, but uh, in great detail. I'm, I don't mean that to criticize you, Brother Bird, at all. Just, just to point out that, you know, I've made that mistake as well. Uh, and now I've learned always put together more detailed uh, documentation like this. Well, you were far kinder to me than I have been to myself. So oh. <laughs> that kind of criticism I can handle just fine. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What else did I have over there? Um, don't move to the next fact until you've recorded the current fact. That's really what happens is you're, you're on a ancestry record and it's got a bunch of stuff and you're going, okay, that's cool. And then, oh, there's, an, then you click on that link. Oh, that's cool. And before you know it, you, yeah. you've got 18 tabs open or you've moved on or you don't remember why. So that's why I'm constantly copying and pasting into a separate document. Now, Patty, uh, last week, um, she typed into the chat um, that one thing you can do, and I'll ask you just to take a second, if you would, Patty, uh, if it's if it's applicable to what I'm talking about, is in Ancestry, there's a note-taking area. I'm not Ancestry, sorry, Family Search. There's a note-taking area where you can um, put stuff that you don't have fully figured out yet. Well, it's like it's like uh, if you're in Family Search, you just go up to. Um, let me, I, let me go into your your guy's name. Let me look here. For some reason, oh wait, what's going on? I guess I'm not in Family Search anymore. There we go. I'll go back in Family Search. Hang on. All right, and I am in. So let me just open up some random person who apparently is one of my ancestors. Yeah. So when you go to the top, you'll be able to see at the top, you'll see uh, view tree and watch and view my relationship. Do you see that? Yeah. The top right, that watch place is the place that you would put Peter Purser. If, or someone, whoever, you, it, it's, if you're working on Peter and you have other names that you want to come back to so that you don't forget, and I have sticky st papers that you're, you know, don't forget this guy. But when you come back in a, a couple of days or whatever, or weeks or months or years, you know, you can put this guy in there. Yeah. Another way that I use the watch feature is um, if there's a person who I believe that I am an expert on <laughs> uh, and I have worked very hard oh, yeah. to, to get all the data right and I can prove it. I want to watch it because I want to know if other people are messing with my beautiful history so that okay. I can keep okay. my history pure. Plus, um, they may be able to, I mean, you know, at least it might be a cousin that you don't know about. Right. So the last thing I want to make, a uh, point I want to make on this uh, documentation uh, recommendation is that it doesn't need to be fancy. This document I'm showing right now is kind of fancy, the way it's all formatted so pretty and there's bold and, you know, it's written in full sentences. Um, it doesn't need to be like this. It's something that you're using for you to make sure you're keeping all this stuff together. And this particular one, I've organized it, you know, it's indented like an outline because each point follows the other points. In the early process, uh, you don't need to have it all indented, you know, following logic. You could just put fact, 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 fact. And then once you feel that you have a body of facts that you, uh, you've collected, then you can go back and start putting it into a hierarchical view or organizing it in a way that helps you to understand what you know and what you don't know. And speaking of what you don't know, uh, some of these here, uh, indeed, they point out what I don't know. Or when I, when I find something that is inconsistent with something else that was found. Um, for example, 
um, scrolling up here, there is a, um, there's an LDS, uh, I wanna make sure I'm looking at the right one here first. Yeah, uh, the LDS church has a um, ch uh, church, I don't know where it is, there it is, uh, no. A membership? Uh, oh, here we go. If you go into the ordinances tab for as a LDS member in Family Search, pop yeah. it real quick to make sure that you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's right here, ordinances. Uh, yeah. it, it will show you this is when they were baptized and you know all these things. And that's cool. I mean, you can it sort of tells you a story. This is almost certainly when he was uh, alive, right? That he was baptized and confirmed looks about right that uh, 11 years later, he was uh, went to the temple as part of, and then it was endowed. Uh, and looks like, whoops, scrolling down a little bit more. He was also married on that same day and uh, sealed to his parents, probably uh, by proxy. So there's a bit of a story that comes to, comes to bear there. But guess what? If this, if this represents the official church record of his baptism, I'm not sure it does, but if it does, well, guess what? I found for, for the Pursers multiple baptism dates in multiple LDS um, repositories that have different dates, often uh, off by 90 or more years. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I actually have, I don't actually trust, I shouldn't say it that way. I don't take the LDS uh, baptism um, database as gospel. <laughs> uh, it's just one more piece of evidence. Um, and I did an entire, I went through every single one. I'm not seeing it here. Uh, let me just, uh, I want to show it to you for some reason. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, here's each person. Um, here's Francis, uh, my three times great grandfather. Uh, th here is the date that the uh, FamilySearch.org has for him. Uh, it is a believable date in my opinion, but I think the real date is actually a year before that, a year and a half before that. And here is my logic. I mean, I found references to his baptism in the journals of missionaries uh, who were serving. Uh, let's see, in uh, early church member file. Um, where else? Uh, and in other places. So I, again, I don't want to go into all the details here, except to say that you should document assiduously and follow every lead and don't make decisions until you, you've, you've done a full set of, uh, of research. Or I, don't, I don't know even know what full set means, but uh, a lot of research. All right, interest of time, Let's, uh, let me move on. Um, third, third piece of advice, build your network. Uh, we've already talked about this. Um, uh, active posters on ancestry, whoops, on ancestry and family search. Um, you know, you'll find those. You should also be mining your close and distant family members. My guess is that you know most of the close family members who are doing genealogy work. That if your family is like mine, there's one or two people who are the unofficial, you know, family historians who tend to be into it. Uh, and have done a lot of work and you can bounce things off of. Use them, build that network, get in contact, stay in contact because they're gonna die because the only people that do family history are old people. Uh, last thing, or last one here is distant family members. Last week, you may recall, uh, we were looking, we were trying to solve the mystery of one of my, um, one of my ancestors Wait, what am I doing here? There we go. Find. His name was Carl John Englehart. And we found that one of the uh, sources in his main, let's see, let me find him here. There he is. In his main uh, data, his details, uh, was that he was um, his that someone said that he was buried in Modesto, California, and we went in and changed that 
to say, no, he was married and buried in Milwaukee and uh, documented why we know this and yeah. even gave a link as to where you can see his gravestone there in Milwaukee. But I, I told you that I, he might have died in California. I just didn't know. So right before our meeting last week, I emailed my second cousin, Penny, who um, was his granddaughter and asked her, what's the deal with Carl's death? I want more details. And she responded back to me with two things, which I've sub subsequently um, ah. updated here. Returning from a cruise, he was visiting his cousin Gladys in Modesto, California, when he collapsed and died of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, and so I, I put that information in there. And number two, Penny sent to me his autopsy report, um, which I posted as a memory <laughs> uh, up here for him. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, sorry, I haven't done that yet. I'm going to, though. Uh, the actual autopsy report that went over, uh, you know, how he died. Not that anyone cares, and maybe that's a little bit personal, but anyway, I'm still going to post it there. But she also, while she was, as long as she was sending me stuff I didn't have, she sent me uh, a scan of two letters that he had received from his military leaders in World War I, okay. commending him for his service and explaining why he was, why he served in America and not overseas. Um, and guess what? My, this great uncle of mine, his brother, my great grandfather, sorry, my grandfather um, was his twin and they were both serving at the same time. And both brothers were mentioned in these letters that were sent. So she added to my collection of uh, memorabilia and sort of overall knowledge about my grandfather because I reached out to this, um, I'll call it distant family member. I'm gonna share one more example of how this paid off for me. Um, I, was, uh, I was researching James Purser and I noticed that a guy named B, as in Brian Purser, on Ancestry.com was posting about a lot on a lot of Purser um, records in Ancestry. So I, I reached out to him and I said, hey, you're a Purser. Guess what? I'm a Purser too. Um, and I see that you're active. Uh, this is my grandfather and this is what I'm doing. Would you be interested in maybe uh, working together? Or I'm, I'm writing a biography. Would you proofread it for me? He's like, yeah, sure. And then when we had a our trip to Wales. He was like, you're coming to Wales? Come on over. We'll have you stay at our house. We'll, let's go. I'll take you around the family sites, you know, and uh, give you a tour. And we did that. I Not only did I work with him virtually, I met him and his wife. And uh, he provided some key insights that helped to round out the story that I would not have gotten by simply sticking to ancestry and family search uh, documentary evidence. And I don't think I'm going to be able to find it, but uh, yeah, I will. Hold on. I can find it right here. It's in my James Persher thing, and it's in the end notes where we're, it's right at the beginning of the end notes. Big deal. You're like, Brad, we get it. Don't tell me. But I'm still going to do it. Um, right here, this, this end note here uh, goes through some clarification. This word, this town, Laurany, there's another town called Laurany Ferry. And they're different. And guess what? There's actually two Laurany ferries and two Laurenies. Laurany on one side of the river is a city. Laurany on the other side is a neighborhood. And so you you have to, if you're looking in a census document for where a person was born or died, you have to know that the parish or enumeration district, uh, when it says one thing, it's referring to this. Otherwise, it's referring to something else. And it was Brian Purser who clarified this to me because he lives there and he's intimately familiar with the uh, the whole idea of parish and enumeration and tithing districts. So that was very helpful to have that uh, extended family connection. I urge you to reach out and establish connection. And often, I mean, Larry, I know he reached out to this Edwin, the ghost of Edwin Durham. <laughs> uh, and sometimes they respond and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it takes months or even a year before they log in or check or think to look up in that upper right-hand corner on Ancestry or uh, 
or uh, uh, Family Search, where it has the messages that you've received. Oftentimes, you don't look there, but they'll eventually look there, and hopefully, they'll reach out to you, and uh, you'll be able to uh, continue whatever mystery that you're trying to solve. All right. Uh, my last topic for tonight is uh, my last uh, piece of recommendation is to build and bookmark your list of genealogy sites. A note about bookmarking. Uh, websites change their pages all the time. And so a bookmark made f three or four years ago isn't necessarily going to work anymore. They, they might have done something stupid like change their website from LDS.org to Church of Jesus Christ.org and it changes all of the URLs and so your detailed search criteria don't work anymore or something else. Uh, <laughs> here's one example. This is they used to have a website called Mormon Migration. But it was a BYU website, so it can't be called Mormon Migration anymore. So they changed the name to Saints by Sea. And so sometimes even your bookmarks, they'll get old and you have to uh, do some work to update them. That was an unnecessary criticism of our prophet indirectly there a moment ago, and I regret it. But the point I'm trying to make is you have to keep your bookmarks fresh. Make sure you bookmark them, though. Here are a set of, um, of LDS research and non-member research sites that I have gone to. Um, I went into some of my documents and just pulled them out of the... Um, out of the notes. And we don't have time to go through all of them, but I want to uh, race through some of them. And I want to show you just a couple or eh, maybe five of them to give you an idea of what they might offer you. And then somehow I'll get this list to you. Um, worst case, just email me at begoodwinatmac.com and, uh, and I'll send it to you. So on LDS side, um, I have Welsh, um, ancestry and there is a whole site run by BYU that uh, has done extensive chronicling of Welsh LDS church members um, and it's really good um, this this is a this Saints by Sea is uh, sorry I need to click on it correctly is a really good website out there um, if your ancestor came across the ocean on a boat uh, it almost for sure is in here and not just that let me find one who came across um, James Purser, that's who we're talking about. Um, and it has a pretty good engine. So it'll it'll identify this this ship, the Nevada, that you know went on these days, and it has two people on it named James Purser. And then also, and there'll be other ones too, all right, um, uh, that may or may not have your ancestor, right? It's showing you where it found the word those don't look like they're good matches because they don't say James Purser anywhere, but maybe there's just somebody writing in a journal, a diary. Anton H. Lund is a church authority. When he was on that boat um, or when he was in Salt Lake writing in the Deseret News about that, um, about that uh, trend, that uh, ocean voyage, um, mentioned a person named James, uh, wrote about it. So you can read the whole thing. So they have journal entries, people that were on the ships and what they wrote about it in their personal journals. Um, I found all sorts of stuff about uh, for my biography about when my, um, in fact, let me just do this. Um, Lewis Purser, Lewis Purser. Um, that is the right ship and it's, his name is misspelled, but um, here's the um, other people that he might be related to. Uh, there's the image of the ship manifest, uh, and then uh, there are usually, yeah, read about this voyage. There are accounts of the voyage where um, you'll hear, we, you know, we learned that Lewis uh, fell down the, the flue of, of a, you know, there was a hole in the, an opening in the, on the main deck, fell into it, down two floors, uh, uninjured. But uh, we learned about that little uh, boyhood mischief as he was crossing the plains. So uh, that's a nice uh, site there, Saints by Sea. Um, there's, uh, let's see, again, I, I could just go on and on about these, so I want to be careful. Here is the uh, one of the ones that I think Patty was referring to uh, a few minutes ago, the early church information file. 
that the church has posted. It's up on familysearch.org. You type in your person's name and birthplace, and it will provide uh, information about church membership for people in in the early days of the church, you know, up to 1900. That can be useful. Uh, it can be useful to help you understand where they lived, when they were baptized, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, that's another similar one, um, different but similar. Uh, because I my my ancestors lived ancestors uh, on my dad's side were all from Great Britain. The British mission manuscript history and historical reports. Um, I found this one day fascinating. Uh, this is on the uh, the church history website, but it um, it's kind of a pain to read because it's all images. You have to actually read through the images, but um, you could read all about like the reports from the various districts and missions of how many baptisms were happening, which uh, which um, branch or ward was uh, had you know an elder who was the branch president? This was a, a subject of intense research by me at one point for my great great grandfather, who I had heard had been the branch president in his branch in Wales. And uh, sure enough, in this I was able to find uh, references to that. Um, oh, did your ancestor serve a mission? Like not not in the last twenty years, but um, at some point, lovely database here. If they served a mission, or if you read about a missionary who baptized one of your ancestors, type in their name here, and you'll often find. Uh, uh, let me just do a, a a name here. Here are guys' names: uh, Griffith, Griffiths. And uh, let's assume that this guy is the one I care about, Brigham Everett Griffith, Griffiths. Um, I will find information about him. I may find stories, documents. I may find a uh, link to his journals um, where he may indeed reference when he baptized my ancestor. So a uh, great little database there if you're trying to find out more information about uh, LDS people. Um, the BYU Digital uh, Library Digital Collection has newspapers, journals, and photographs. For some reason, I stuck it on this side. It actually should go over here because there's also the U of U Digital Ar Archive, the Utah Digital Newspaper Archive, and the Mountain West Digital Archive that have newspapers, like Deseret News from forever in the olden days. Um, they have photographs, uh, maps, and uh, journal histories and all, all that kind of stuff. A uh, really good source of sort of Utah-based LDS um, uh, history. Uh, this one, of course, is your pioneers that came across the uh, came across the land on a you know in a cart in an ox cart or a, a hand cart. Type in their name. Uh, let's see who who would do this. James Purser. I think he took the train. Actually, he came so late. Let me do a different one. Um, let's do Brigham Young. I don't know. That's stupid. I should have been more prepared on this one. Brigham Young search. And uh, yeah, I'll pick random Brigham Young here. Uh, and it, it shows who, which company they came across in, who in their family they traveled with, what the sources are that you can go look at uh, to verify and get further color about that person. So it's a pretty nice website if you're, um, if you're wondering if your person crossed. And, were they in the William Martin Hancock Company? Well, you'll find out if you click on here. Um, there's a nice, uh, okay, there's, here's uh, Andrew Jensen's Encyclopedic History of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, if, you, if your person lived in Great Britain or in the British Isles, the Millennial Star was the newspaper printed there, and it, um, it has the entire archive here where you can read articles, um, search through the articles to see if your ancestor is mentioned. Let me briefly pop over here to the non-member stuff. Don't forget, in addition to uh, familysearch.org, familysearch.org right here. If I go back to the main page, there are the, oh, come on, where'd it go? Let me go back. There are the other sites. Um, sorry, go to details and they show up here. Find my past and my heritage and whatever this is pronounced, Geneanet, Geninet, I don't know. Um, some of the don't forget you should be searching there too to help solve mysteries a lot of times it's going to be the same stuff or overlap but a lot, sometimes you're going to find a gem there don't forget to look there um 
did your ancestor come to America through um, Ellis Island? Now, this is not Ellis Island. I should have put that on here too. Ellis Island has its own website and database. But before Ellis Island was, which was like not, it didn't even open until like 1910 or something. I don't remember the exact date. Maybe it was 1899. Before that, uh, immigrants would come through a different part of New York called Castle Garden. And, uh, and it has its own immigration database that you can look at for, you know, when did someone show up? What, uh, what ship were they on? Who was in their party? That kind of stuff. Um, don't forget the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress, and I've only, I've only had one entry to the Library of Congress here for their historic newspaper archive, but they have um, photos and maps and all sorts of stuff um, from the time frame and the cities and whatnot uh, that might help to inform your understanding of your ancestor. Chances of them having specific data about your non-famous ancestors low, but their uh, news newspapers is probably the closest place that you're going to find potentially learn that, for example, that I learned that my great uncle, Max Engelhart, was arrested for theft uh, in Milwaukee in the late 1800s. Somehow that fact never made it into the uh, family lore about Uncle Max. Um, I want to spend, I'm looking at the clock here, I want to be cognizant of time. Uh, I'll only go two more minutes and then open it up for questions. Uh, this, uh, when I found this historic map site, this one specific historic map site, it blew my mind. It's the Perry Castaneda Library Map Collection at the University of Texas. Um, and it is loaded with uh, maps of the world from the, the time frame of when your ancestor lived lived there. So if you are trying to understand geographically or to build a, a, a biography of some sort that might include maps, um, I maps really help me to understand the relationship of life events. And uh, so rather than looking at Google Maps, which shows you know, highways in the modern world, um, you can find all sorts of maps here in here. Uh, and I think they have some, they have, they have an index. Uh, it's not just this one list. There's more than just this one list here if you start looking around in this collection. Uh, let's see, if you have Welsh ancestors, Wales kept its own um, church-related maps that they call tithing maps. That might've been in the UK as well, where, because the church was assessing essentially taxes on behalf of the state church for each uh, property owner. And so sometimes where a uh, census, uh, the tithing map can help fill in what the census can't tell you. Um, the census will tell you so-and-so lived in, in some uh, hamlet, but not exactly where. The tithing map is a map that shows the outline of their property and coincidentally, how much they paid in tithing each year, how much they were assessed in tithing each year. Uh, okay, and two more. Uh, the Family History Archive, man, this is a cool one. Uh, it, it used to be at BYU, but they moved it over to Family Search uh, a while back. And it's among many other books that have been loaded here are um, family histories that have been uh, submitted over the years uh, by, you know, LDS people a lot, um, amateur historians and whatnot, including my father-in-law. Look at this. He wanted this. He wrote this book. I, I helped him with it, but he wrote a, like a 200 page biography of his father and uh, and had it submitted to the, um, the family history library. And there it is. And, you know, there's any number of family histories, some of which are published by, you know, uh, real publishers. Some are old, old, old. Some of them are newer. But the point is, this is a place where you can go to find additional information that someone else has written about your family member. All right, well, that's uh, that's the, my quick uh, race through um, building the list of sites. It, it Just by way of review, tonight's focus was on solving mysteries. And in my view, if I was to say it in you know the shorthand, staying focused on one mystery and not getting distracted by bright, shiny objects, documenting, um, even if you only have a few minutes and then put it away, but it, you store it in a document somewhere, build your network to see if someone else has found out something that you couldn't find out and 
start building your list of genealogy sites, one day they're going to pay off for you in solving a mystery. Okay, uh, that's the end of my prepared remarks. Um, next week is our, oops, next week is our final session. It's next Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, the topic, preparing names for temple ordinances. Uh, I hope you'll make it if you can. Are there any questions? I have one. Pick me, pick me. Yes. So when you were showing uh, the the uh, records that you'd gone through as you were looking at my ancestor, Donald Durham, you uh, you showed that there is a Durham family tree. If it's somebody else's family tree, can I go look at it in Ancestry? Yes. Uh, yes, you can. How do um, I how do I go about doing that? I will show you. I'll show you that. I'm still presenting, so let me just pop over there. I'm trying to find the window where I can see you guys, but I, for some reason I'm missing it. All right. Uh, so actually, let's. Uh, well, these are all these ones. Uh, let me just open a new one to Ancestry. Ancestry.com. Let's uh, go back and do a search in all collections for, uh, was it Donald Albert? Donald, whoops, I gotta spell it right. Donald Albert um, Durham. There we go, remember to hit tab. And uh, I'll just say Missouri. Missouri, 1894, that should get, get him to me. 1894, search. Look at how fast that is. That is, that's amazing how fast it's able to do that. So uh, if I click on Durham family tree, uh, I'm there. I'm actually in the tree. You'll see, it says it right here. You have to look, otherwise you'll, you'll fail to notice. You're not in your tree right now. You're in someone else's tree. So any clicks that I do inside this tree is gonna stay in the tree. So if I click on Donald Richard, I'm still in that person's tree moving my way around. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that does. I didn't realize I could go look at other people's uh, hard work. Yeah, if if they've if they've made it public, um, and I think public is the default. I actually don't remember, but most most of them are public. One thing you can do when you if you find somebody who you wish you had in your tree, is you can add them to your tree from the other person's tree. Tools, save to tree. Which tree do you want to save it to? That's my tree. And then um, if, if there's if there's already somebody there, um, great. But if it's somebody new, uh, click on add a new person and it'll just uh, import that person into your tree for you. Cool. Thank you. All right. Good. Any other questions or comments? You are recording this uh, session so we can watch it again. Uh, I am. Yes, I am. How do we get to it? All right. Good question. <laughs> uh, last week's, uh, I failed to post until five minutes before our uh, meeting started tonight. Uh, here's my commitment to you. I'm going to post tonight's tonight. Uh, and uh, and you'll also find all of the other episodes up there. And the, the way okay. that you get it is by going to bradgoodwin.me. And just click on the word genealogy and there are separate blog posts the last uh four blog posts once i get these up there uh will be the the four episodes of this series that we've done and you can watch them up there i, I actually posted them to youtube uh and it'll just there's a link that takes you over to youtube to watch each of the posts uh, but I, it's they're all in one place if you go to bradgoodwin.me and click on genealogy i i like it that's Excellent. great. Yeah. I'm going to share this with others and, and also listen to this again. I really liked some of the new stuff that I'm not, I wasn't aware of all those, um, you know, those, um, the sites, the genealogical oh. sites. That was <laughs> fantastic. And to be able to see, you know, I, I bet you I might have some relatives that would be going across the sea, you know, that type of stuff. Being missionaries, you know, I want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and actually it occurs to me, rather than me sending this uh, PowerPoint file, I'll put those links in the blog post for this episode. So they're right there in the text of it. 
easy to click on. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. That'd be great. That that's one of the things that I wanted to have is that um, the list of the 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 sites, the genealogical sites. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted. And here's my ask of you guys: if you come across amazing sites that uh, you think might have general, you know, applicability, please share with me because uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't know everything. I run into what I run into and, uh, and then uh, I don't run into a lot of stuff too. So I'd love to hear what you're learning. So do you mind if I share this with my son-in-law? He's doing the same thing, Zoom's in his ward. And I watched theirs, it was nothing like this. One. I think he would be really impressed. Hi. All right, great. Thanks, David. And thanks to all of you. Uh, we'll, hopefully you'll be able to join next uh, next Thursday night and we'll get ready to send somebody to the temple. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.